Hi folks, Bob Collins for Before You Spend Thousands. We're going to be talking about tripods and as you can see here in front of me, I've got a, to use a big 50 cent word, a big plethora of tripods and it's kind of an accumulation of the tripods that I've put together while I've been developing my YouTube channel and many of you out there probably run into the same thing and again one of the things we try to do is we try to give you some information before you go spending thousands or hundreds of dollars in developing your um, stable of tripods. We all enjoy watching people, uh, the other folks, the other creators and such, but then when it comes down to us making the decision, it's all about the dollar and the timing. And I'll just speak from my, my own personal standpoint. I simply started out with this unit here. And what this is, this is uh, a nice tripod. This came from B&H. This is called the Mangus 4000, VT4000. And I think it was only like $159. It's got nice extension on the legs. It's got a big plate. And um, also it's, it's a fairly smooth uh, fluid motion video head. And uh, you know, that, this was my first uh, tripod purchase. And uh, I thought it was pretty effective and has been effective. And as a matter of fact, I, I still use this tripod. It's a little heavy, a little unwieldy, but I do like the fact that it's got a ball head and it allows us to, um, allows me to uh, adjust the level of my camera. Now, I think what you're going to find out is you're going to enjoy having the ability to balance out your, your video uh, head, the camera stability plane on your camera, whether you're shooting down or level or up or whatever. And one of the things I think that's going to become apparent to you pretty quick is does the tripod allow for a ball head? which is, you know, our basic standard bald head that we see on many of the tripods out there, or does it have the, the video style head like what, what you see on the end of this particular tripod? Now, you know, based on this one and the fact that it, it's aluminum and it is a little bit unwieldy, I noticed that a lot of times the stability of this was a little questionable and of course the weight caused issues, things along those lines. Now one of the things that um, I did, I took the next step and I bought a Manfrotto uh, heavy duty aluminum tripod. I'll take some pictures and I'll post some, some uh, you know, some inserts right up here as to what that tripod is. I'm actually using it to shoot this right now. And uh, and it's extremely stable, it's heavy as all get out, and I love using it right here in the studio, and it's pretty much my mainstay as far as that's concerned. Now, I've got a leveling head on my camera, um, and I'm able to level that. It, it's from Amazon, it's called a Neewer, about 49 bucks, and that tripod that I'm shooting on right now doesn't have a ball head like this one. And uh, it was, I think, about $400 or so when it was on sale, that sort of thing. With the cross arm and such, um, it came up to like $550 or something like that. But I'll take a picture of that and post it so you can get a, a vision of it. Now. I kept moving around and doing different things out on the sales floor and shooting videos out there and trying to move that tripod and this tripod around became, became pretty difficult. And as I became more experienced, I, I jumped over and went to this Benro. Now this Benro, and again, I'll put a little link up here for the Benro. I've kind of become a little bit of a Benro fanboy, <clears throat> um, fanboy, right, a 68-year-old fanboy, 
but uh, have become kind of a Ben Rowe fanboy because as I've done my research, I found out that, you know, the value based on the quality, uh, the features, and the price uh, is what made for me the Ben Rowe the, a great choice. And this Ben Rowe is um, uh, carbon fiber legs and I, I put another one of these newer balancing uh, leveling uh, bases on it, made it very, very effective. And I'll be glad to talk about leveling bases, you know, maybe on a, a different video. And on this one, uh, it really is so super lightweight, but at the same time, it's extremely stable when I set it up. Now I've got the legs pulled all the way up on it. That's why I'm able to, to get it up on the table here. But uh, what a wonderful, easy to move around tripod this thing is. It's so light and stable. Now, also, as I've moved through my experience with tripods, one of the other things that you're gonna take a close look at are the way the legs are secured. Now this Mangus has these flip locks on it, and of course the, uh, the big Manfrotto over there, it also has flip locks. And when I came to this Benro, this is called the TAD37C, and uh, it's the three series Benro, and uh, I think it ran like $300 or so, but uh, the C being the carbon fiber, now the TAD, that has to do with the leg clamps. And I've become accustomed to the clamp locks. And um, you know, for me, it just, I, I think it works better. And uh, this particular Benro, I put a Manfrotto video head on it. And it really is a, a tremendous and nice video head. And I think it's called the MX Pro, runs $119 or something. And it's got a quick release plate. But one of the things that I really like about this particular uh, fluid head is that this quick release plate is fa it's fairly small. And I don't have a whole bunch. I'm not shooting on a C100, 200, or red or anything like that. I've just got a Canon uh, 6D Mark II. I've got an ADD and I've got uh, a Sony A64 uh, 100. So, you know, my cameras are not super heavy, but at the same time, anytime you use those big plates, it really makes it a bit unwieldy when you start trying to get the batteries out and stuff out of your camera. So you gotta think about the usability of these quick release plates in combination with your uh, tripod. It's kind of hard to use a tripod without some kind of a decent, um, you know, head on it of some kind. And of course the ball heads there, they have the small plates on them, but uh, I'll, I'll talk about ball heads in just a little further along in the video. But I really like this Manfrotto and there's actually a copy of this that Neewer did, but the thing is the Neewer utilizes the bigger plate. Didn't like it so much, very inexpensive, uh, a little under half of what this one cost, and it is what's supporting that ADD, and I've got it actually shifted over using a, a small rig cage, shifted over so it's easy for me to get the, the battery out on, on that unit. The only problem with that if you're moving your stuff around and taking your stuff on and off, again, it's all about the convenience. And of course, today's, you know, batteries are, you got to swap them out, you got to charge them, you got to take care of them, that sort of thing. So that's another one of those little things you have to pay attention to when it comes to buying tripods. Um, it sounds funny how you, how you start putting together the different parts and pieces and facts as far as that's concerned. Now, many of you, of course, as we vlog or, or whatever, we want a small tripod 
to put, um, you know, on a camera, then we utilize and we find these little Joby things. This is one of the smaller ones that I put uh, my GoPro uh, action camera on and uh, I use it in the water and I'm able to wrap the legs around the, the ladder in the pool to get it to stay. And I've also got a larger one that I've used to do some, some simple vlogging. Uh, I don't do a whole lot of vlogging, but uh, at the same time, you're gonna have a, a tendency to do so because so many people out there are doing it on YouTube. Now, one of the things, I did buy a gimbal. Uh, the gimbal came with a very cheapo little, little tripod, and it's nice to have a tripod to set your, your gimbal down. I bought a Moza Air when they came out. Uh, nice, I, I enjoy the, the gimbal. But one of the things that I, I disliked was the cheapo uh, tripod that was on it. And so I wanted to upgrade and figure out a little bit more stable um, tripod. And I went through a couple of these small style tripods. Now this is actually the tripod base that came on my Benro monopod. And uh, it's pretty cool because it's got a quick release uh, on the top of it. So when it's on the monopod, it actually is very easy to get it loose and um, you know make it work for you. So it's really nice that way I can, this goes on the top of the monopod, this goes on the bottom. When you're not using it, you can take it off and actually incorporate it into your uh, something else like a tabletop tripod. It's got a little ball head on it right here, a single action ball head, and uh, works out pretty cool. The legs fold up, and it's super stable, so when I put my gimbal on this, it uh, works, out, works out pretty slick. Now, I started doing a bit more traveling, and when I was doing some traveling, I, I mainly took my Sony uh, cameras. I have an A7 III and also have the, the A6400. And so I wanted something besides just a tabletop. So I bought the Benro Slim, and this is a nice little unit. It's called the TSL-08C. Um, the aluminum version cost, I think it's $99, and this one with the carbon fiber legs was like $28 more. And pretty slick little unit. It was only available with the twist type extension locks on the legs, which, uh, you know, it was okay, no problem there. It's got a center column that you can extend up, loosen the collar here and extend it up. Comes with a single action lightweight ball head. And this, you know, this would work okay for many of you that have uh, a lightweight camera and such, and it folds up and it will go into your luggage or into you know a decent sized little camera bag. Uh, but I usually stick it inside my luggage and check it so I don't have to worry about it. The only thing about it is I felt like with my A6400, 16 millimeter lens, um, a Sigma 16, four, 64 mil, uh, 16 millimeter, sorry, lens uh, and a little five inch monitor on there, it just, it just felt really scary is the best way I can say it. And I just felt like this is just not stable. And of course, when I thought about traveling with my, with my 37, uh, it was just too big. So I had to start looking and what I found was, all right, Thanks for uh, letting me take that quick little break. I wanted to shift those other ones out so I could show you this Benro. Now this Benro is called the Aero 2. They have an Aero 2 and an Aero 4, and this is an aluminum unit. And you see how nice and compact it is, and, and I actually took a, um, an adapter plate and put on top of the S2 video head so that I can use my quick release plates 
from my man Frodo, which I've kind of uh, settled in. I'm not big on the Arca Swiss stuff. Um, I just find that it costs more. But uh, so I've kind of settled in on this Manfrotto small plate. I'll kind of hold it down there so you can see what I'm talking about. But I mounted this on my video, S2 video head. And this unit's kind of slick. It's about 19 and a half inches long. So it goes in my carry-on very easy, or I can slip it into my check bag. And not too heavy, I think it weighs a little bit over four pounds or so. But this seems to give me the stability above and beyond the other um, 08 Manfrotto there that I was just showing you guys. And one of the cool things about this is that the legs will fold down, and then when they fold down, you push in one of the little locks here, and it locks in place. Of course, it's got this extension, like on the other one, and I can loosen my head there, move this up and out of the way as I want to, and of course, loosen my collar. This drops down, and you can turn this around if you really want to. You could turn, turn this upside down and mount the camera down here if you wanted to. But this thing gets really pretty high, and the little bin row is real short, and uh, for me, it just wasn't that comfortable for doing you know, filming and such the way I wanted to do it. But uh, one of the other things about it is not only does it have a video style head on it, it has this built-in um, leveling ball here. So when you loosen, and one of the cool things about Benro is on these adjusters and tighteners, if you pull out a little bit, you can turn this and it will adjust based on where you want it to be and it doesn't have to be stuck in one position. And you can see how this video head, I'll move this out, you see how this rolls around and allows you to get that nice level and it, it comes on here. And this unit um, sells complete, not with the little adapter, plate here, it comes with the standard Benro uh, video plate on this S2 head. But this comes and it's, it's $200, you know? So it's, it's just a great, great value uh, for folks out there. So this tends to work extremely well for my travel. I wanted to do this video to, to give you guys a little understanding about uh, what I've invested. Uh, there's probably a thousand dollars worth of tripods here. Um, and, and I wanted to try to give you my experience, save you some money. Uh, maybe if you've got one specific need versus another, uh, it'll give you some information on how to uh, maybe spend your money. And uh, if you like the videos I've been doing, uh, this is my third one on this channel, uh, hit the subscribe button and please hit the like button. I'd love to hear your comments about are, are you a, a Ben Rowe fanboy or fangirl like, like I am? Um, which one of these do you use? Maybe you're a Manfrotto um, fan or whatever it happens to be. Uh, the Gitzos and uh, Really Right Stuffs and those things are kind of out of my uh, Bill Folds price uh, capability. But uh, like I said, uh, you know, tripods are, are near and dear to us here in the, the YouTube channel. Hope I haven't blathered on too long, but I've been able to give you some useful info. And again, my name's Bob Collins. And as I say here on this channel, it's all about the bokeh or bouquet. All right, see you guys.